mom and dad. Office Disseminator is not for kids. Wait a minute, This is HD, the Office Disseminator, bringing you a review of the 2006 accoutrements Vincent Van Gogh action figure. Without further ado, y'all, let's go ahead and chop it up. diorama so I'm finally putting in some work the diorama that you see here behind Van Gogh is just it's just trial and error man I'm not going to keep it the foam was too thick but if you buy that skinnier uh, foam board at Home Depot or Lowe's man it comes in those big old sheets I'm just gonna have to cut it down man to fit it in my car you know to bring it home but uh, I'm gonna redo this but I'm gonna salvage the balcony so you can see the balcony around it right there. You can see the roof of the balcony. I want to put an actual roof up there on top as well. And I want to have three of these buildings side by side. So you, you don't see anything else but the diorama. All right. So right now you're seeing a sheet in the background. And this is going to be a bar. Put a piece of glass in there. That's uh, 8 by 10 picture frame that I just squeezed right there into the... The, uh, the 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 building and I want that you want I want you to be able to look out inside and see the bar in there and I'm gonna have some outdoor seating you know I got big plans uh, but I'm taking it one step at a time but one thing I did want for my diorama you cannot have a French Quarter diorama without an artist somewhere man New Orleans is a city of artists man you come to our city man making with people i guarantee you at least three out of five is going to be an artist man that's our city you know so you gotta have an artist you know in your diorama if you're doing a diorama based on an artistic city so bam my favorite artist vincent van gogh i was very fortunate to find the figure uh for twenty dollars, man, which with shipping on Macari, still in the packaging, unopened, with all the accessories, you know, the cards bent and all of that. That's all right with me because I'm gonna open it, you know. And uh, so, looking at the packaging, you can see Van Gogh here on the inside. Uh, you can see his palette. He comes with a different portrait with his here with his ear severed off. Comes with a paintbrush. And uh, he comes with an easel and a painting, and we're going to open this up and see, but there's four paintings in there, and I'm assuming you could switch them out of the picture frame there. Uh, maybe. I don't know. We're about to find out. And so what I see so far, I like his articulation. Ain't going to be nothing crazy. This is just going to be a prop for my diorama, right? So he's going to be painting fight scenes and stuff like that, man. Uh, so I plan on, you know, getting jiggy with it. You, you have one of his paintings there in the background. Um, I dream my paintings and then I paint my dream. That's a quote from Van Gogh there. This is produced by Accoutrement Toys, Outfitters of Popular Culture. Again, this figure came out in 2006. If you go to accoutrements.com it takes you to Archie McPhee's webpage and I let you know it seems like they are toy sellers you gotta have a you gotta sign in to shop on a page and I ain't trying to sign in and you know create a username and all of that to shop on a page so I'm probably not going to explore their page too much but here on the back you have his profile full name Vincent Willem Van Gogh uh, he was born in the Netherlands in 1853, died in Paris in 1890. Occupation, of course, was a painter. But, you know, he was a minister as well, and they share that there in his uh, biography in his early life. He was a missionary. Uh, weapon of choice. <laughs> this is funny. A straight razor, right, because he severed off his ear. Um, let's see. Interesting fact. After cutting off his ear, he gave it to a prostitute. Yeah, that's all accurate. Uh, you know, he only sold one painting in his whole life, man. And most of his paintings were produced in a very short time in his life as well. You know, he's really considered to be one of the great painters of, uh, you know, of modern history, man. And he probably suffered with a little mental uh, disorder. Uh, you know, man, it's believed that he committed suicide. I want to recommend this if you haven't watched it. Uh, what's the name of the movie, man? It's the best animated movie ever created, in my opinion. Uh, Loving Vincent. Damn, I went to the cinema and saw it twice at the Broad Theater in New Orleans, man. That's how much I liked it, all right? And I bought it on iTunes as well. 
Loving Vincent. It is the first hand painted animated movie. They allegedly painted enough paintings to cover the whole state of Texas to create that film, man. So it is it is it is an achievement. And if you haven't seen it, man, you gotta check this movie out. And it's kind of like a film noir, and they have a polemic in the movie, and their argument is that Van Gogh was murdered. He wasn't, you know, he didn't commit suicide. So definitely worth watching, okay? So uh, they got some of his quotes right here, a little biography. I'm not going to read all that. So that's the packaging, y'all. And again, this figure was produced, uh, copyright 2006. That's what it says down here. All right. Not for children under 36 months, uh, three years old. It said there's a little ball code on there. And of course, you have the little bubble right there. And uh, man, that's the packaging. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what my main man is all about. Just another little look at the packaging. It seems like they photoshopped several paintings here. So you have Starry Night here in the background. If I'm not mistaken, that's a painting of where he was living in Arles, uh, France. You have the postman. I forgot his name. Uh, it, you know, it escapes me right now. I believe that's the Harvester back there, man. I can't quite recall, but it's a blend of different. I'm not sure what that painting is right there with that face. It might be one of his self-portraits, perhaps. So uh, I just wanted to show you all that as well. And here is Vincent Van Gogh out of the packaging. And so far... I am liking what I see. Just get this full picture of him right here. If you're looking for a bystander in your diorama that you want to use as a prop, I think that this guy will work well. So let us get a fuller picture of the figure. We're going to look at his head and body sculpt, his accessories, and his articulation. Here is his bearded head sculpt. You know, man, I feel like he's pretty pale. Definitely, you know, could have had a darker uh, flesh tone. You know, he is European, but, you know, man, the dude's out in the sun a lot. And I just feel like, you know, the skin tone was, uh, wasn't was a good choice. Just a little pale. You know, I'm just going to give you a, a full-blown review of the guy, you know, and just give you my thoughts as well. But, you know, I, you can, it looks good for what it is, though, right? Uh, I'm not sure how much the figure cost when he first came out. I know people are selling him for an arm and a leg now. Uh, but, you know, it might have been like $10. Who knows, man? And so, uh, for what it is, you know, man, the head sculpt, it, it looks good, you know. Uh, you do have the uh, reddish, the, it seems like they use some orange paint. There's some bleeding going on right there on his forehead, eyebrows. And so, you, you know, the beard doesn't necessarily connect right there. So, uh, but yeah, man, it's just a straight orange or red throughout. Does it look like Van Gogh? I think that, you know, if, if you want to saw the packaging and you just picked up this figure in like Goodwill or something like that without the accessories, I don't know, man, would you think it's Van Gogh? I'm not a hundred percent sure, but you would think it's Van Gogh if he had the other head sculpts. So let me show you that one. And to get the heads off and to swap them off, what you do, there's a button back here. And these things literally shoot off. Watch this. <laughs> I, mean, I, I could probably hit that van over there. Uh, so what you're going to do, you're going to snap it in. And so there's a little, uh, you can see this little, uh, this little knob right here. You put that in and it hinders it from making the 360. So he, oh shit, it popped right out. Let me put it back in. And so, yeah, man, you just swivel it side to side like that. And so, for what it is, it's nice. Now, if you've seen this in, like, you know, Goodwill, you'd be like, yeah, man, look at Van Gogh. You know, because in one of his uh, self-portraits, he's wearing his hat. And uh, he has this bandage over his ear. This is after he cut off his ear, right? And so, uh, this head sculpt's cool, man. You know, he shaved his beard here. Seems to be the same uh, nose, perhaps. Yeah, man, it seems, seems to be pretty much the same head sculpt. They just put a beard on one of them, same nose, uh, same red hair. Uh, now, the hat and all of that sculpted on, you can't take none of that off, all right, y'all? Uh, this is all sculpted in and painted. So, he has the white bandage, the blue hat with the uh, black fur up front by the visor. So, you know, man, for what it is, it looks nice, man. I like it. Uh, he's going to have a blue shirt on here with buttons, button down right there. He's going to have a round neck. 
his uh you know he has his sleeves rolled up artists at work right there's some wrinkling there in the cuffs there are three screws in the back so you can take this guy apart i'm assuming to uh there's there gotta be a spring in there man i don't want to shoot this across the you see how that just shot off i may have to get that back in a moment right right under that van so there's a spring in there, man. So there's some kind of a construct. He has black pants on. So this is just all one piece right here. His his, his you know his upper and lower bodies just one piece. Uh, we'll look at the articulation in a moment. So he has I guess like a dark brown pair of pants because his shoes are black. So that is his body sculpt. Uh, yeah, man. You have some like wrinkling in the pants back there, as you can see. And so, uh, for, for just being a basic figure, um, I think he, uh, works out real well. Just be careful touching that, uh, button in the back because his head just pops right off as just saw. Now, let us take a look at his articulation. With the arms, now this is interesting. You can get a 360 with the arms. Um, the same thing with this one. With this one, you have a single jointed elbow here. Uh, you know, same thing with, with the left arm. But the left arm has a swivel, uh, you know, at his bicep, whereas this one seems like it's just super glued stiff, all right? And I'm assuming they put it like this because this is the hand that he's going to hold his easel with. And it gives you a little flexibility to get him to actually hold it, you know? So I believe that's why they gave this the swivel and they didn't give this one a swivel. You do not have a waist swivel. However, with his legs, they will kick forward that high they will kick back this far <laughs> which is pretty good and he does have a single jointed knee okay and uh that is that is the the totality of his articulation but you know man if you wanted to get this guy like in a run, running pose or something like that for your diorama man perhaps you know perhaps perhaps you could pull something off you know that that doesn't look uh, all too bad to get him in a, in a running pose like he wants to go to somebody's aid you could probably put like a knife in his hand or something like that uh or a blade right because he just cut off his ear so you know just be you can be creative with this guy and you can do some fun things in your photography uh, I plan on using them and, and doing some fun things with them man, when I get around to it man I have so many photography projects and I'll never get around to doing any, any of them, but uh, yeah, in the near future. So that's his articulation, y'all. Again, it's pretty decent for just being a figure that serves as a prop. Now let us take a look at those accessories. So in my mind, he comes with eight accessories. So most importantly, you're an artist, you need some paintbrushes, right? So he comes with this paintbrush. The paintbrush is just going to be a straight black uh, let's see if I can get this to focus. Yep, there we go. It's just a straight black, y'all. Uh, seems like the tip of it up here is gray. So, yeah, it just goes right in his hands. So, I'll put the brush in this hand. It can fit in this hand, too. But I just feel like uh, you can't get the easel in this one. And you can get it, not the easel, the palette in, in this one and not in that one. So, here goes the palette here with the paint. So, you know, I, I think it's designed really nice. Uh, if I can actually hold it. <laughs> so, there you go. You got some paint on it. Black, white, red, blue, orange, green, and yellow. So, that's sculpted really nice, y'all. And again, man, wow. You know, there is this groove in his hand. You know, if you put it in his hand, it's just like he's holding it like to the to the side like that, man. And to me, I don't know. I guess you could... You could get him to hold it like that if you wanted to but for me man what I found to work best is you just set that over his thumb and rest it on his arm and to me it looks a little bit more natural you know so you can get him to do that so it's not really a huge balance in that but you just balance it on it you know and, it, and, it, and it's not much of a problem okay so then of course he's going to come with his easel so with the easel uh, there's a little screw back here and uh, you know there's a there's a leg that that has articulation so that just pops right out swing that out and the easel stands all on its lonesome really nice all right so there goes the easel let me move this guy back so we can get everything in focus here and then he's going to come with this picture frame right here okay and he's going to have uh, 
what is this, three additional paintings. So you got the, uh, the Night Cafe that was painted in France. You have the self-portrait when he severed off his ear. Uh, I'm not sure where he painted this one right here. Perhaps that was painted in France as well. And what else do we have? We have this one that he made of this bouquet of flowers. I can't remember the name of, some of the paintings, the exact names. I mean, I have I have a book, coffee table book, given to me as a gift by a very special person um, that has every painting that Van Gogh uh, painted. So that's right on my coffee table in my living room, all right? And you know who you are. Thank you for that book. It really means a lot because, you know, it's my favorite artist. So, uh, so with the... Uh, the picture frame right here, all you're going to do is you're going to slide these puppies out. There's a little uh, entrance and exit, so you just push this down like this, and see, it comes right out right there, boom, and then you could put a different one in, so you, say you want to put this bouquet of flowers, bam, you just slide it right in, and then it just goes right in like that, all right? And you just mess around with it and get it to fit and to look nice, all right? And then bam, once you got it like that, you can throw it on as an easel, and it makes it look like he's actually painting it, okay? So let's get that to focus there, and let's get him closer to the painting. So, et voila! For my diorama, I'm going to have him positioned like this for the most part. You know, looking at objects and painting, uh, so... Yeah, man, I think that works out really, really, really nice. And our main man, Vincent Van Gogh, is going to stand in a little over five inches, almost five and a half. And here he is scaled next to Pizza Spider-Man and Howard the Duck. Here he is scaled next to the AOA Jean Grey and Wolverine. Here he is scaled next to the... Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian and the Child. Here he is scaled next to Deadpool and Domino. <laughs> Here he is scaled next to the 80 Years Hulk and the Walgreens exclusive thing. And here he is scaled next to two New Orleans born superheroes. We have the Queen of La Novella Lyon. The most powerful, most beautiful, most illustrious, Monica Rambeau. And the Prince of the French Quarter, Remy LeBeau, known in the French Quarter simply as Gambit. So there it is, y'all. If y'all were ever wondering about this figure, wonder no more, man. I think I've given you every aspect of the figure that I could think of. At least he is, uh, I guess, what is that, 14 years old. He was in that packaging. I just got him out. Fresh out the case. Of course, you know, I smelled the man. I love the smell of that plastic when it first come out, comes out of the packaging. And so he's a dope little figure, man, for what he is. Even if you don't want to use him as a prop, you just want to put him, like, in your office or your home on a shelf somewhere. You know, man, he's a dope little figure, and I think he will bring you a lot of, you know, joy, man. And you'll get some enjoyment out of the figure yourself. So, uh, that's what it is, y'all. If you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the review, please consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell. Give the video a like. And I got some more reviews coming your way. We're going to finish the AOA build, uh, Sugar Man build the figure wave. And I got some other figures like this uh, <laughs> that I normally don't review that I'm going to be reviewing as well so as we say here in new orleans y'all till next time